Welcome to a new Project Calm video. So today we are in India to visit Aravil, which might just be one of the largest communities in the world. So Aravil is based in the south of India, near a town called Pondicherry. And this community is big, like really big. 1360 hectares, which is about two and a half thousand football fields. Over 3,000 people live here and many nationalities from around the world, mostly Indian, followed by German, French, Italian and a long list of others. Yeah, many different nationalities, because the goal is to have a place where men and women from all countries around the world can live in peace and harmony together. A place to realize human unity, which sounds impressive. It started by a French woman and an Indian man in the 60s and nowadays it's still running. Apparently they also don't use any money. I've seen and heard a lot about this place, so I'm very curious to check it out. So let's have a look. So we arrived on a big parking space with Uber Tuk Tuk and many buses. This feels a bit like entering an amusement park. Selfies everywhere, souvenirs everywhere, lots of it. Some are made in Auroville and some are just... <sighs> and if you're lucky you can get to see their golden ball or get a ball of ice cream. There are many tourists here, it's, it's kind of boring. And even though this sign says it's not a tourist destination, it definitely feels like that. Honestly, this is not what I expected at all. Very commercial, shops everywhere selling things and even banks to get money. But the impressive thing about Aravel is that it's big, like really big. Let me show you on the map. I mean, they even have a map. See, within this community there are many little sub-communities. So the touristic part is just one tiny element. And this map might look like random chaos, that's my fault. Because the city is actually very well planned. See. Inside Auroville there are four main areas. The residential zone, focused on making a nice living place. This is the largest area. The cultural zone, here you find things like research, art, sports. The industrial zone, and this is where things are made and manufactured. And the international zone, and people living here are grouped by the continent where they're from. Sort of their small version of the planet. And around these four areas is the Green Belt, a 400 hectares area around the city for organic farms, orchards, forests and wildlife areas. And finally, in the middle, there's the Peace Area, a point where the whole community is built around, with this building as the key center point, the Matrimander. This structure is seen as the spiritual center of the community, a place for meditation. It's really an impressive piece of architecture to witness. And you can see it somewhere being built in the background of many old pictures. Because it took 37 years to complete, so many old members have contributed in some way to build it. It's very big if you compare it with the size of a human. Really an impressive piece of artwork. And the inside looks rather surprising. It's a lot like a 60s Star Trek setting in there. All white, but it's not allowed to take pictures in here, so here are some images from the good old tourist center. Here, there's even a 3D model. But overall, spirituality is a big central element, doing inner work. Now there's another big community center point here, which is food. And there are many places to eat or have kitchens within Aravil itself, but the biggest one is the solar kitchen, where every day a thousand people eat. So it's in this building and we're gonna have some lunch. So here you can see what's from Arville. AV is from Arville. And the plain curd is made here. So welcome to the solar kitchen. My name is Laura. I live here, I'm a newcomer. So this kitchen, solar kitchen, is a collective kitchen where all the inhabitants can come and eat. Uh, it's a veg kitchen, vegetarian kitchen. 
where people can come and eat from Monday to Saturday. And it's based on solar energy. And there's also a diesel backup in case there is no sun. Yeah. sesame for the protein, some pickles, which is very Indian with chili and all, some jaggery there. I don't eat at uh, Solar Kitchen. Sometimes I come here to Foodlink. So they have fruits, vegetables here, coming from the farms of Auroville only. And here there's some nuts, jam, pickles, peanut butter. From Auroville. Oh, from Auroville. Oh, there's only products of Auroville here. Uh, papaya, green papaya. So that's my aura card. Okay, so time to explain this money thing. See, there's still money floating around everywhere. But this is mostly used by people for the outside and short time visitors. For people that will stay longer, they can use this aura card. You can use it to buy basic things like food, soap, toothpaste. And you get credit on it by putting money on it. Because young members have to pay to be here. So in a way that method is still very similar to normal money. So the money part does get a bit more interesting for old members and business owners because there are many little different businesses in Auroville from making soap to carpentry, having a spirulina farm, owning a guest house and they all generate income and they have an interesting way how to structure that. So we're going to visit Aruyali who is making eco bricks. So let's have a look at his factory. Uh, my name is Mohan. I'm an Aurovillian. Uh, I started this company called Aruyali. I joined Auroville in 2008 and I started this unit to produce at the block. Uh, this is the size, uh, the standard size of the bricks we are regularly producing and uh, people are very much interested uh, in this brick. It's a solid brick which has been produced with 5% cement, 15% sand and 80% uh, uh, red soil. This is the manual press we have been using for more than 10 years. People are very much interested to do, use this brick now. So we, we are not able to supply bricks to them. So what, then we bought this machine and it helps us to produce more quantity of blocks in a day. And then we are trying to meet the demands. And by that way we are helping people to construct houses with these bricks. How many bricks do you make a day? In this machine we can even uh, produce 2,000 bricks in a day. So and how does it work now? Because you run a business, but uh, your profit, is it for you? Is it for Auroville? Where does it go? It's an Auroville unit and uh, one third of the profit should go to Auroville, uh, Auroville developments. Two thirds uh, stays again uh, for Auroville, for units development. And all the Aurovillians are uh, paid maintenance. So is it also that you would get the same as the people working here or not? Is it different because they Some of the workers? people are getting more than me because uh, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> because they are physically working there. For example, masons are getting about 800 rupees per day. Hmm. So an Aravillian shouldn't get more than 20,000 rupees per month. So if you're comparing with, with the salary with me, it's 15 to 20,000 rupees. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will get out of Thank the sun so now because it's getting warm for you, no? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thanks. Right. So basically all the money earned with these little businesses, like the restaurant, goes to development of Araville. So it doesn't go to the individual Aravillian, but it's spread out between the community. And everyone gets paid, they say, in maintenance. So you get food, housing and some credit on your Ara card to buy your own things. It's kind of a big difference compared to how the rest of the world works.
And one of the things I just cannot not see uh, when walking around here is all this waste on the streets. So they dump it like next to the road. And this is quite a problem in India in general, but also in Auroville. So all the trash is being dumped, burned, and it just creates a mess. And, but luckily there are also some people in Auroville that really try to do something with all of this waste. So let's have a visit to the eco-center. Hi, I am Parini. I will take you around for the eco-service to show what we are doing in the eco-service. So here all the waste from Auroville is coming in? Yeah, this is a waste coming from Auroville. And so we have a 360 pickup point, old Auroville. This one of the truck, we have a two truck, this one of the truck. We pick up all the waste with this. The waste is coming here. This is a all kind of waste, like a plastic, paper, mixed waste. All is here. So one of the bags from there goes here? Yeah. yeah. When, the, when the community was segregating like a six category, which come here, the amma will segregate here. 83 category. So the 83 category, it will split it like, you know, how we need it and how to send it to recycling plant. So what are a few categories you have? We have here the metal, aluminium, newspaper, plastic, water pool, that uh, white paper and KD, different uh, name, I have to say also all the 83 category, but not 83 here. <laughs> When the amma sat out, it's all coming here. You can see here the tetra pack and dog food. Here we have all the glass. This is oil container. It's come from solar kitchen. Terraform. Crushed ter terraform was over here. This is a PVC plastic, which is a non-recyclable. So one of the options which we are trying with the terraform, how to use it because the plastic, it take like 600 years turf farm is all life will be staying so we don't know what to do so we making out of that uh, plastic and thermocol uh, turf farm out of uh, the bricks here and also you can see that over the roof they also we using uh, uh, for cooling we crushed and we fix also there mm -hmm. yeah, when you go in you can see how cool inside it's so a styrofoam styrofoam yeah wow when you feel that you can feel that. And this is for the community members? Uh, this is when the children come, I have to give a cl class. How to do, what to do, okay. why we need to do. To help them to sort out yeah. their waste? Yes. Like a tool for them to... Yeah, at least if I show this one, they will understand what, what mm -hmm. really we are doing. And would you say the trash that you see around Araville uh, on the streets or a bit close to the road, mm -hmm. it comes from, from visitors or the villages? Or, it's or from the not a, villages and visitors. Mostly they put visitors. Mm. That so much tourists, so one day like, you know, 3,000 to 13,000 people coming per day. So minimum like off season, I can say like in the hot season, 3,000. Mm. But now that the busy season, now 13, so one of the most impressive things about Auroville might just be all the land that they regenerated. Because when the people came here in the 60s, this whole part of India basically was just dry, rocky sand. Like it basically looked like a desert, nothing was growing there. And throughout the years they planted over millions of trees. And now it has this rich green forest which is full of insects, plants and trees. So a much more lively ecosystem. So let's have a look at one of those communities that is still living in the forests in huts, taking care of all these trees. So I was just going to edit the video and I realized there's no audio underneath this entire interview. And why are you not focused? Man, I don't know what happened. I really need better gear. But sorry, Shake was nice, but uh, for now I'll just do the interview with a voiceover. So this is Shake, a super cool guy. He's originally from India, then worked at Instagram and Asana in San Francisco as a software developer. Now here to live community life. And he was showing us around, explaining all the details of their work. Addressing the importance of forests and trees in our life, and how they can transform a desert area into a rich ecosystem. And this is actually a massive and super important topic for the future of mankind. So we'll cover it later in the Project Comp video in depth. But one of their main achievements here is retaining water. It's like their gold. It's life for the land. 
And so because they managed to do this, they actually now have a little lake to swim. Where are you from? Credit Farm. Mm. No, we're from Germany. Oh yeah. So because this was a desert area, water is scarce, so that's why they have dry compost toilets. But they also have developed funny tools to be a bit more conscious about the water use. So let's say you want to wash your hands. Instead of having one big cup, you put it in this cup with a little hole. So the water comes out in a bit slower pace, but it's still pretty good to wash your hands. So it's a small clever tool to use less water. And finally we're gonna meet Jürgen, an old member who's been here since the early days. He actually helped planting a lot of these trees, but that's not what I want to talk with him about. I'm kind of curious to just hear him out what's it like to live over 40 years in Araville, hear his perspective. So we're gonna meet him at his house, which he actually built himself. This is on red, this is okay? Uh, yeah, my name is Jürgen. I'm originally from Germany. I grew up in Cologne and I came to India in 1973 uh, together with a friend. Coming to Orbe was that we had written to the mother of the Orbe in Russia <coughs> in 72 and asked her whether we could join the Orbe experiment. And then she wrote back to us that this was fine and whenever we are ready, we should come. Then we came the next year and uh, we flew from Amsterdam to, um, to Delhi and then we were um, going to take a train to Pondicherry but uh, when we arrived at the airport in Delhi then all our money was confiscated uh, Indian money which we had changed in Amsterdam and we had all the receipts everything and it, we thought it was totally legal but it was not so they took away all of our money and then we went out of the airport with nothing. No paisa, no rupee, no euro, nothing. <laughs> Mostly people who come to Orville, they come because they feel some kind of inner call. Uh, some people come here by what you call accident. And some people, they, they, are, they have been here, but they, they really don't, they haven't even understood what Orville is even after 10 years. So. Uh, then you have some people who are very devoted. Then you have some people who are more into, let's say, research of what spirituality in the Indian context really means, of which Sri Aurobindo and the mother are part of, but not the central idea. Then there are other people who feel that, that everything around Aurobindo has to center to Aurobindo and the mother. But uh, I don't think that even Aurobindo or the mother would have envisaged this kind of attitude, I would say. <coughs> and Orville, um, at the beginning, plans were being made, master plans and all kinds of things, of how this area should be developed in order to be a model city. Uh, that didn't really work out either. It's uh, when, when you look at the surface and when you look at the development that has taken place, uh, it really has hardly anything to do with these master plans that have been made at one time. With the exception of the Matramandia, which always wanted, should have been the center of all, which it is, geographically. But uh, it's a, personal, it's a personal thing. For some people's personal development, the matrimonia is very central. And for other people, it, uh, it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, because uh, spirituality is something that you develop within yourself. And it is something totally beyond anything material. You can't build a temple or anything and, and believe that this is going to help your spiritual advance. It's, uh, you know, you, you follow something completely different and you also have to be open for new and different developments in the sphere of, of spirituality. Because it's a, it's a never-ending process of, of growth and uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have anything else you want to say to YouTube world? <laughs> we wish everybody the very best. And, uh... That's nice. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, so the conclusion. So I would say the size of this project is just impressive. So many people, so much infrastructure, school, dentist, hospitals, they have it all. They're even figuring out their own currency, which I think it's impressive to do at this large scale. You can learn a lot from that. I'm kind of surprised about the sustainability of the project. I mean, you have some solar panels, biodigesters, uh, some food is being grown, but not that much. Um, but I would also say it's not really their main purpose of existing because they're more focused on the inner self. So I've spoken to many people here about the future of Araville and they seem pretty divided. Some people still stick to the old plan that was made in the 60s and some think it needs to change. And that gives a lot of freedom for people to interpret it in their own way. But it's also lacking a little bit of leadership, like no one really knows where the project is going. And on the one hand it's nice, but sometimes it also seems like people are a bit lost on what to do. So I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but it's just an observation. Uh, and then you have the bittersweet part of tourism. On the one hand it's nice because it brings a lot of new people to Araville, they get to know the culture, they buy local products, so it helps to support the local economy. But it also adds this weird commercial layer where people come here to consume the place and you see uh, properties going up in price in this region because hotels are being built and set up. So I'm uh, personally not a big fan of that commercial layer into the project. Now all the people are gonna be upset in YouTube. You should make money, bro. But I would say overall impressive that this place exists and it's already been existing for 50 years. Imagine back then that people came here in the middle of India in this desert place to set up this new society. Uh, so respect for everyone that actually had the courage to do that. Uh, overall, I would say a lot of things learned from it. Probably also a lot of mistakes being made, but I got a lot of new knowledge for Project Camp, which I need to digest. So thanks for watching and see you in the next Project Camp video. Oof. <laughs>